This is part 18 in a series of videos in which I am producing this. It's a reproduction of an ADM3A dumb terminal main PCB. I've got it as far as now being fully tested. It uh, all seems to work the way it should. And um, the only real changes I've made to the design from the original are with regards to fitting uh, a more modern EEPROM for the uh, character set and also fitting an extra socket so I can uh, connect a monitor more easily. You could use the original um, monitor socket but uh, I just wanted to add this one just to make it a bit uh, more straightforward. Uh, all the rest of it is pretty much identical to the original with one further exception which is to add uh, another keyboard connector down here so if you can't find the original keys um, I'll be producing um, a small add-on keyboard PCB to go on here or you can uh, produce your own it's simple matrix uh, layout for the keyboard as much as I could I included the options that were with the original so anything that was in the schematic as an option I included that as well and that includes a connector down here at least a space for a connector down here which is for uh, an external numerical keypad so that replaces the uh, or duplicates the functionality of the keypad on a more modern PC. It's not uh, built into the ADM3 terminal directly, it's an add-on um, module that stands alongside the terminal but it plugs into this connector so we could uh, potentially add that if we wanted to. Um, I haven't fitted the components on here yet to power the monitor. I have wound the transformer for this project and I've wound it in a particular way and I'll explain why I've wound it the way I have uh, later in this video. Now I wasn't actually going to make this video um, but after discussing the pros and cons with another YouTube creator decided that I would post this and it really relates to how I am going to uh, finish off this project and I think for everyone it will be something different but I just thought I'd show how I'm going to do this I would say right from the start of this video that this is not something I'm advocating for anyone else. This is just something I happen to be able to do because I have a piece of um, what is effectively old junk lying around that I intend to repurpose for this project. So the original ADM3 unit looks like this. So that's the original ADM3 and you can see it's uh, nice and sleek, uh, quite small. Of course I don't have one of these cases so I can't use that. Uh, what I do have is one of these and for anyone that uh, doesn't recognize it it's uh, an old PET computer. It's uh, an 8032 and I'll explain why I'm going to use this for this project um, but what I'll do first is clear off the bench so we can have a look inside this and I'll explain why I'm going to be reusing this. Okay, I bought this off eBay a number of years ago and it's uh, a unit I had originally intended to repair. I uh, have repaired many pets, um, so literally hundreds of them over the years. And uh, over the years you tend to accumulate parts as you know, um, but this one turned up, it was sold as not working and uh, it turned up, I opened it and I haven't actually done anything with this, uh, but as you can see there is no PCB in here so uh, I didn't really pay very much for it so I wasn't too concerned I also wasn't too surprised he didn't show the inside of the unit so I wasn't at all uh, surprised when there was nothing in here um, but because of what he was asking for it then uh, it seemed like a worthwhile purchase just for the case and the keyboard I don't know if the keyboard works I don't know if the transformer is any good or if the cap's any good um, but I do know also that the monitor does not currently work. Uh, but I know the tube's okay. I have tested the tube. I've got a, a tube tester. I repair a lot of uh, vintage equipment. And so uh, I quite often have to test old tubes. This one tests extremely good. Um, gives very good emissions. Uh, no shorts, anything like that. So I'm fairly sure the tube itself is fine. But um, what I tend to find with uh, this vintage of PET is the connector on the other end of this cable 
So this goes up to the monitor, this is the monitor signal drive cable. This is the power, it takes AC power direct from the transformer. Um, the other end of um, this connector normally comes adrift. Uh, they're not very good connectors when they get uh, moved around a lot, the wires do tend to pull out of them and loosen. And they get stuff back in over the years but ultimately um, they form poor connections. And it can cause the monitor uh, drive electronics to fail. There's a board on the bottom of the monitor up here and it can uh, cause that to fail. Um, but hopefully it's just loose connections. So I'll pop the cover off the monitor and uh, we'll have a look in there and uh, see if it's going to be repairable or if it's just uh, completely destroyed. Okay, so looking in the back of the machine, it's um, fairly dirty but not too bad. And this is the connector I was talking about and sure enough it's in a terrible state. The uh, wires have obviously all been uh, pushed back in at some point. Um, however, I have tested this uh, with a meter and they all test good. Now, I will be replacing this because of its uh, state, but uh, unfortunately in this case this is not what's causing the problem. Uh, also, i found that when I plug the mains power in, uh, the heater on the tube does not light up. And uh, that's kind of strange because uh, it's powered pretty much directly from the transformer. So um, it doesn't rely on the drive signals for the heater to come on. The heater should come on as long as there's AC power applied to the board. So if we look at the schematic, then it's quite a simple arrangement. Uh, we have power coming in at the bottom, goes through a bridge rectifier, and then through a voltage regulator, and then through an inductor for a bit of filtering. And uh, this, um, in part, feeds the heater up here, so this is connected to this point. Um, but as this is not um, coming on, and I know the heat is good, um, either we've got an issue with uh, one of the resistors, um, the inductor, uh, the bridge rectifier, or the regulator. Most likely it's the regulator, that's what I've tended to have problems with on these uh, previously, so uh, I'll test that. While we've got the um, schematic, I thought I'd just um, briefly explain one of the other reasons why uh, I'm using this particular machine. This is what I intended to do from the start with this project, but I wasn't going to mention it because uh, I really don't want people pulling these machines apart to build uh, a dumb terminal. Um, it's up to you, of course, but um, I wasn't quite sure whether it was a good idea to show this or not. But uh, after discussing this with somebody else, it seemed fairly obvious that these are still quite expensive, so it's unlikely someone's going to tear one down just to uh, use the component parts. But um, if you do have one of these and it's working, I would advise against taking it apart and uh, using the parts. Um, there's probably an alternative you can use for the case or hunt around. You might find someone selling one without the parts in it, uh, as I did. Uh, okay, so um, back to this unit. Another reason for uh, wanting this particular unit. Now, if you've been watching the series of videos on the um, ADM3 board as I've developed it, you would have noticed I've been testing it with a monitor off a, a PET, but not this one. It was uh, off a, uh, a smaller 9-inch um, uh, version of the PET. And the schematics vary uh, across the different versions of the PET. And in particular, one of the differences is that on the 9-inch monitors, um, the video is inverted. So uh, white is uh, when the signal's low and black is when the signal's high. Whereas on this monitor, um, it's the reverse. White is a high signal, black is a low signal. And you will have noticed on the previous videos that I was uh, picking off the video from the middle of the ADM3 card. And the reason I was doing that is I was uh, picking it off from a point where the video was inverted. And that was just so it would work with the monitor I was using. But because this monitor uses um, uh, an inverse video relative to the monitor I was using for testing, um, I should be able to connect this directly to the proper output of the ADM3 card. One other thing that uh, any sharp-eyed um, viewers would have noticed on the previous videos when I was doing the final testing on the ADM3 card is I had it powered through the transformer I'd wound 
um, and I was powering that from the bench um, Variac, but I was only running it at around 200 volts. And the reason I was doing that is because I wound the transformer to use this particular monitor. And this monitor requires uh, 18 volts uh, AC, whereas the 9-inch monitor requires 12 volts AC. So I wound the transformer to give 18 volts to power this particular monitor, the 12-inch monitor. Uh, and so I had to run it at reduced mains voltage when I was testing using the smaller CRT. I didn't want to uh, damage the 9-inch um, uh, nine, nine CRT uh, units. So uh, that was the reason for that. And it's also the reason that the transformer has been wound to give 18 volts for the CRT power. Uh, okay, so back to this one. Uh, as I said, it's um, it's not the connector as I thought it was. Um, most likely it is uh, this voltage regulator, so I'll get that checked. And um, I'll do that off camera, it's just it's this device down here, so it's just really a case of taking the board out and uh, um, taking the old one out and replacing it. I'll measure it first, of course. Uh, and if that's uh, the case, then um, I'll get back on camera and then we'll go through some uh, testing of the uh, board and the rest of the CRT and make sure it works before we go any further. Okay, I tested the regulator and sure enough it had failed, so put the board out. It's just a, a standard linear um, 18 volt regulator, so uh, you can uh, quite easily find replacements for those if you need to. Uh, what I'll do now is power it back up and uh, if the board is now working we won't get anything on the CRT it does require drive signals for it to effectively wake up but we should see the heater coming on so I'll turn the uh, light off and power up the pet and I don't know if you can see this but um, the heater uh, has now come on on the pet so uh, we are now getting some uh, life in the monitor. There's nothing on the screen, as I said, it won't come on unless we uh, provide it with some drive signals. So that's what I'll do next. I'll uh, hook it up to the signal generators, as you've seen me do before. I'll show that briefly on camera, uh, just so you can see how the display looks, and uh, hopefully we'll get something. If not, uh, I'll need to look further into the um, drive electronics for the CRT. Oh, or maybe uh, there's an issue with the uh, yoke or something. I don't know why this machine was scrapped. It could have something to do with the uh, CRT, of course. Okay, so I brought the video drive cable out through the side of the machine. I've got it hooked up to three signal generators. You could, of course, use something that gives you the uh, correct video out, but uh, I tend to prefer this method. And um, I'll explain why in a few minutes. But um, uh, if you need to determine what the signal levels are, then look at the schematic. Uh, and also the schematic shows us the required signal timing. So for the vertical drive, it's looking for 16.7 milliseconds. That's the frame rate. And uh, that enables you to calculate the frequency that you need to set um, the signal generator connected to that line to and it wants a low signal pulse width of 0.8 milliseconds. So that's what I've got the uh, signal generator configured to give that's hooked to the vertical drive input. For horizontal drive, it's looking for 50 microseconds, that's 20 kilohertz, and a low pulse width of around 15 microseconds. And again, that's what I've got the signal generator set to. For video in, I'm just giving it a, a pulse input um, again, this is a uh, high level, gives us uh, bright, so I've got it hooked up that way around. And it's just a multiple of the um, horizontal drive frequency, so it should give us a static or fairly static, um, not image, but uh, display. And it uh, it will drift because these aren't synchronised, they're not all run from the, uh, the same uh, source, so they will drift a little bit, but it should be relatively static. And as long as you pick a sensible frequency for the uh, video signal that is a multiple of the horizontal drive then you should get um, a series of vertical bars on the display. So we'll try and power it up and see if it comes to life. As I said I did uh, check the voltage here when I had the back cover off and it seems fine uh, and now we just need to see if the uh, rest of these circuits work. As I said I don't know why this unit was taken out of service so we might still have an issue in here. 
So I'll just move the camera across so you can see the screen. And I'll power up the pet. You'll see that's not doing anything at the moment because there's no drive signal. And now I'll power up the signal generators. And you're seeing flicker on the, on the uh, screen, I suspect, but that's not visible on the actual monitor. That's just uh, the interaction between the camera and the uh, display. OK, that's well, uh, a nice bright display. Let's try adjusting the brightness, see if that works. And it does. Uh, full height. Now, obviously, one of the complications we're going to get here is that um, the frequency, the frame rates and line rates that this monitor wants to operate over is determined really by the device it's connected to and there are various components in here that determine uh, what kind of range this will operate in a linear fashion over and that does not match our ADM3 board so it should be a simple case of um, just changing a couple of components on this drive board to give us a linear operation over the uh, frame rate and line rate that we're looking for. To give you an idea what I'm talking about, if I now change, this is the ideal um, refresh rate and line rate for this monitor. But if I change the, um, for example, the horizontal drive frequency, you'll see that we get some non-linearity in the um, display because the components that are creating the sweep won't be uh, working in the centre of their uh, expected operational range. So I'll try changing this and you'll see uh, exactly what uh, I'm talking about. So it's quite hard to see but all these uh, bright lines, the retrace lines, should be evenly spaced. Uh, I don't know how clear this will be on the camera, but at the top it's compressed, so they're closer at the top than they are at the bottom. And if you remember the testing I was doing with the other monitor, that we had uh, very severe non-linearity, and that's why. It's just the frame rate didn't match the ADM3 board. So if I go down a bit further, you'll see that as I go further from the correct frequency, uh, we're getting uh, more distortion. However, this is far more forgiving than the other monitor, so it looks like we'll be relatively close, and I won't need to do too much tinkering with components to get this to work at the frequency we want it to. Okay, set it back to its proper frequency. So you'll see that um, as we go through the testing of this in future videos that uh, I may need to do some, do some tinkering with this, and uh, that should enable me to get uh, quite a nice linear display. I may even replace the CRT for a white one to match the ADM3. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to achieve by using this is, of course, down here. So while I will be making a small keyboard to add on to the project, uh, of course, if I have this, then I can simply make use of this keyboard. I can't just plug it in directly because the matrix layout is different, but I should be able to modify this so it works um, fairly effectively on the um, ADM3. What I may end up doing is actually modifying the, um, the connections a little bit so that the key caps match what the ADM3 is actually doing. There's quite a lot of commonality between these, but some of the key locations are different. Uh, so what I can do is actually modify the connections to the, um, uh, the keyboard so that the keys actually do what they're supposed to. And of course we have the um, numeric keypad that I can also make use of and plug that into the accessory socket on the ADM3 card. Okay, so this is all well and good. Um, it's looking quite promising in terms of same size monitor. Um, it was an 80 character monitor on here as well, that's what the ATO stands for. And so we have the bases of quite a good case here. Here's a plastic top part of the case. It's a plastic top cover, but it's a metal surround, a metal base. Um, very similar sort of in terms of its 
um, build to the ADM3 terminal, but it is bigger, it is a bit more bulky. Um, same footprint on the bench though, so that's quite nice. Uh, and of course it will give me what I want in as much as I'll have quite a nice functional dumb terminal if I can manage to get the ADM3 board into this. The ADM3 board is quite a bit bigger than a PET board, so the next thing is to see if it will actually physically fit into this case. I haven't tried it yet, I've measured it and in theory it should fit in if we take the transformer out, but um, that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the transformer from this unit and see if the ADM3 board will actually fit into the space that's available inside this case. Okay, so to get the transformer out, first I need to remove the guard that's around this um, filter assembly and main switch. It's actually inside the case, but I need to get these screws out first. So I'll take these out. Plenty of rust falling out. I will be repainting the base off this as well, it is fairly rusty. So now I've got the screws out, this is obviously loose, um, but it frees up the cover that's inside the uh, pet case. So I'll spin the pet around, we'll open it up, look inside, and then I'll see if I can get the transformer out. But I want to get it out in one piece rather than in, in parts, so I'll probably unscrew it from the base of the case rather than removing the top screws that hold the transformer to the spacers. Okay, so as you can see, I haven't cleaned this out yet. It's full of uh, dirt and debris of uh, all sorts, plenty of critters in there as well. So what I want to do is get this transformer out. It is, of course, wired into the socket at the back, and we've got this guard here. But the first thing to do is remove these two screws. Now on the pet, the way the transformer's mounted is it's bolted to a plate at the bottom. And um, in fact, I suspect there's an issue with this transformer. It's getting really hot. Uh, which it shouldn't be because there's almost no load on it, so um, that's not a good sign. Um, so I'll remove these two screws, we can then slide the transformer forward and we should be able to then pop this cover out of the way. Okay, so that's those two out of the way. We can now slide this forward and then pull the entire thing out of the way, which is why I took the two screws off here. And what we can now do is flip this up. Now I do need to take the transformer off here. And what we could have done, of course, is take these two screws out through the base of the pet, but I need to be able to disconnect the transformer as well. So it was just far easier doing it this way. And so what I'm going to do is take this right out of the pet, dismantle this, get the transformer out of the way, disconnect it, and then we'll be able to reuse the main switch and uh, main cable and fuse for our own transformer uh, when we refit it. So I'll get it out of the way, get back on camera, and then we'll see what space we have in here for the ADM PCB. Okay, so I've removed the four nuts that hold the transformer to the bottom plate. And uh, I thought I'd show this because um, it's quite interesting. There's normally a filter inside this, um, this shield. And um, I've mentioned many times that it's not a good idea to turn these uh, machines on if you find one in a loft because that's normally the, the part that um, destroys itself and it can do a lot of damage downstream to the uh, electronics, and that could be what's happened to this one. Um, I noticed these have been soldered on, they've been taken off and put back on at some point, so it looks like um, somebody's bypassed and removed the filter that was in here, so no doubt it destroyed itself, and that could well be what um, marked the end of the life of this particular unit. It could well have done a lot of damage to the main board. So we'll get the transformer out of the way. I'll need to uh, replace these wires anyway. Um, I will be refitting this plate. I could make up a simpler plate that just went onto the back, but 
uh, one day I might want to restore this back to uh, being a pet, uh, in which case I don't want to do too much irreversible damage to it. So as much as I can when I'm doing this, I'm going to uh, avoid cutting too many extra holes and that sort of thing. So if ever I want to, I can refit um, an original board if I ever find one. Okay, so now we've got this out of the way, all I have to do is disconnect the ground lead. So we've got this common ground point down here. Okay, and now we can just lift this entire transformer assembly and put it to one side. So this will now go back into its original location and I can screw this back down to the base. But of course what we're really looking for at this point is whether the uh, ADM3 card will actually fit into the space that we have here. So more evidence here of um, some modifications to this uh, machine. Okay, so I'll grab the ADM3 card. Now, as I said, it is quite a bit bigger than the original PET. So what I'm hoping is that it will fit in to the space that we have available. It will go back slightly further than this. I'll be able to, what I intend to do is cut recesses for the D-type connectors. And uh, I'm going to put this as high as I can, bearing in mind that um, we've got to allow space underneath here. And what I'm looking for is enough space underneath it to fit the transformer. If I can't do that, I'll move the board all the way to one side and we can mount the transformer, hopefully, on its edge. Um, failing that, the only other alternative is to put this board very low down in this case and then mount the transformer up here. I don't really want to do that if I can avoid it because it will mean flexing the mains cables every time the top's open and closed. Um, just to show you what a tight fit this will be, I'm just going to back the camera away and you can see that uh, we are right down to the limit of the front end. In fact, what I'll have to do is spin the, there's a prop down here, camera down. there's a prop down here like a carved bonnet uh, prop that holds the uh, top cover up uh, and obviously that's uh, not going to work in its current location. So what I'll do is I'll spin it around 90 degrees and have it come down the side of the machine instead. Okay, so it's looking like it will fit in here and uh, it's just really deciding how to um, juggle this around so that I'll be able to fit the main transformer in here. And with any luck, there'll be enough uh, clearance underneath to put it on the base. Uh, if not, as I said, I'll have to put it uh, somewhere else and uh, possibly make use of this space here. But if I put it in here, I'll more than likely have to uh, make a shield up with the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. So there's a, quite a big space here that uh, the transformer would fit into, but I would have to make a, a shield here to prevent distortion on the uh, display. Okay, so that's the plan. As I said, I don't want to um, encourage people to go around tearing these machines apart and using the cases. Um, that's kind of the opposite of what I'm hoping to achieve with my channel. Uh, but as I said, it, it, this is quite a good use for an old case if um, there's no uh, way that the machine can be restored. Uh, also, as I said, I'm not going to destroy the original PET case. Uh, probably the most I'm going to be doing to it is cutting a couple of uh, slots in the back for the D-type connectors. Um, there is space down here possibly to get the D-type connectors through the original openings if I end up fitting this on the base of the machine, but that kind of depends on where the main transformer is going to sit. Um, but either way, there is space in here just for this. And um, as I said, the next thing is to look at exactly how I'm going to get the, the various components in here. But that's it for this video. Um, one other thing, as I said, it's, it gives me an option for the, the keyboard, um, but any comments and feedback would be appreciated.